Hey there folks, my name is Dan Goodman and I want to welcome you to another exciting rendition of Stormwind Studios succinct held online remote training sessions or shorts. We should just call them shorts. Anyways, this is the eighth short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts picking up on the previous one which would have been number seven because this is number eight by discussing the different access point modes. What does that mean? We're going to talk about modes, modalities, modernization, moderators, modeling, modes, maybe? We're gonna talk about modes. All right, so as far as these modes are concerned, we have the local mode, which is the default configuration providing full access point capabilities. In this case, 99% of the time is devoted to data services with 1% of the time devoted to monitoring. So these access points will do a full channel scan every 180 seconds looking for rogue devices. Now just to clarify, a rogue device is not always a bad device. It could be an actual rogue device or just our next door neighbor's access point that just so happens to be within range of one of our access points. Now, all of the information gathering during this 1% time of monitoring can be collected by a controller or sent to another type of central device. Monitor mode focuses the capabilities on monitoring, hence the name monitor mode. Now, within this, we have two sub modes. One is known as the tracking optimized monitor mode or TOM, which is optimized for RFID tracking and then the wireless intrusion prevention system, which has a fixed scan time of 250 milliseconds per channel. The monitor mode is also useful when it comes to just troubleshooting the basic functionality of your wireless LAN. Flex Connect mode is a solution for branch and remote offices, as we discussed in an earlier short. Basically two modes, connected is when the access point can reach the controller, standalone is when the access point cannot reach the controller. Now, in the event a controller comes back up at any point in time, the fallback shutdown feature enables the access point to recognize this and automatically switch back to the connected mode. And then, of course, if it goes down again, it'll automatically switch back to the standalone mode. Now, additionally, the switching itself can be centralized or localized. Central means that the wireless LAN data is tunneled back to the controller. Local is where the 802.1 tags are added by the access point to its local wired segment. Starting at the top of the second column, we've got the rogue detector mode, which is really a more focused version of the monitor mode. In this case, the ARP packets are captured to determine rogue status. Once again, this information can be collected and reported to a controller for further action or another central device. Now, in this case, the radio is turned off and only the access point is in a listening state. The sniffer mode is once again, kind of a more focused monitor mode, if you will. It dedicates all capabilities to sniffing a single channel in both the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz band. All traffic is going to be captured and forwarded to a central server. So that means it's gonna gather things like the timestamp, the signal strength, and the packet size. Bridge mode is used to set up indoor or outdoor mesh networks. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with a mesh network, it's essentially a handful of access points that have connectivity to the, con to the controller. All others will rely upon these access points to provide a bridge back to the controller. So instead of all access points connected to a controller, some of them are, and the other access points essentially piggyback off of the ones that are connected. So this is obviously useful where cabling is difficult to run. It also eliminates single points of failure by establishing a certain sense of redundancy. Now you can set up bridge mode as the default mode on any type of access point that supports it. Kind of rounding out this discussion, we also have another mode that we've mentioned, the Office Extend mode or the Office Extend Access Point or OEAP. 
This is designed for teleworkers as kind of a uh, VPN slash hotspot hybrid, if you will. It's unable to automatically discover a controller, so it's not a true lightweight access point in that regard. You have to use the GUI or you have to use the command line interface on the access point to say, hey, this is the controller I need you to connect to. Multiple wireless LANs are configurable in this particular mode, but the best practice is to actually configure the access point, lock down its configuration, and tell the user, hey, go plug this in at your home and just play it. Don't mess around with it, just plug it and play it. The Spectrum Expert Connect or the SE Connect or the Spectrum Only Monitor Mode, SOM, once again, we have to have three names for one single thing, this is where the access point serves in an information gathering role. So things like signal strength, utilization, and interference. All this information is going to be fed into analyzer software, essentially whichever one you prefer that understands this information, to make the necessary adjustments. Now one thing to remember is that this is a mode that's only available on clean air capable access points that also have the Cisco Spectrum Expert software installed. Finally, we have the Wireless Intrusion Prevention System, or WIPS, Enhanced Local Mode. This provides wireless threat detection and mitigation while still operating in the local mode. All of the packets on the servicing channel are going to be scanned. This will eliminate the need of an overlay network that provides scanning. However, this does require an additional Cisco product, the Mobility Services Engine, as well as Prime Infrastructure with the WIPS licensing. Now, if you want a quick summary of all of these things that we discussed, kind of like we've done in other shorts, we've done our best here to kind of summarize all of these operational modes specifically for the indoor access points. This gives us a side-by-side -side comparison showing the indoor access points and their operational modes. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to pause the video so you can take a look at it. Moving on. What about the outdoor access point operational modes? Here is another side-by-side -side comparison showing the outdoor access points we previously discussed and the modes they support. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds once again to pause the video so you can take a look at it, jot down your notes. Moving on. That officially wraps up another rousing edition of our shorts focusing on wireless LAN essentials. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you are notified of our new shorts shortly after they become available. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.